Writing a good first test is a critical piece of getting rolling with test studio as quickly and effectively as possible. Hi, I'm Jim Holmes. I'm a testing fanatic. I love automation. I love test studio. I used to work for Telerik, uh, both as an evangelist for test studio and the director of engineering. It was a great job. I love test studio. I'm here to help you get started writing a good first test. Let's get rolling. Okay, let's go ahead and start up Test Studio. The opening dialog lets us get some help. Hey, that's me, an old version of this video you're watching right now. We can check for updates, manage our licenses, we can create projects. There's a list of recent projects here, and I'm going to open that one. This is Test Studio 2016 R1 that I'm using for this demo. Test Studio lets you rearrange windows and panels as you see fit. These are also all collapsible so you can really customize how you want your layout. There's a standard familiar ribbon bar to work with that will change as we look at different contexts. Test Studio also plugs into Visual Studio which is great when you need tight developer tester collaboration. You can take care of complex coding tasks but still share the same great easy to work with tests. When you get started with your first good test, and emphasize good, there are a few key aspects to understand about your recording that will make your experience a whole lot better. Let me walk you through a few of those. As your test suite grows out, you're going to want to organize your tests in logical groups. In Test Studio, we can create folders to help you do that. And what's nice about Test Studio is that it does not get in the way of how you want to organize, or how you might desire to organize things. Some teams like to work, um, let's say, their tests in uh, roles. So we might have something like administrative tasks. Other teams might be more concerned about features. Other teams, depending on the environment they're working on, might have to trace back to broad requirements so that you might need to do something like that. What's also nice is you can drag and drop and reorganize your folders and individual tests as you see fit. As I set up my folders, it's easy for me to add new tests here, either through the ribbon bar or through the menu here. And just like the folders, I can give good names for my tests. On different items, there are a number of properties that I can take a look at. Description, owner, there's even more test properties here that I can work with as needed. I'm going to use the Kendo UI Web Sushi Demo. It's a great web app, looks really sharp. It's built on top of the Kendo UI controls. Uh, they're HTML, JavaScript. They look really sharp, and it just makes for a good, easy walkthrough for a demo like this. Here we are, ready to record a test. I can work with a number of different browsers, i.e. Firefox, Chrome. I can also work with Apple's Safari for Windows, However, Apple stopped supporting that years ago, so I don't even mess with it. I never install it, so it's not picked up here. To record, I can pick any one of the browsers. I'm going to use Chrome this time. So the recorder starts up. Notice here, we need to enter our navigation URLs here, not up in the regular navigation bar. So we'll start recording. Notice that we're picking up actions back here. I'm just going to add an edamame item to the cart. Notice that things changed here. We also got the click action. Now it's time to start understanding how we can work with Test Studio to add in validations, verifications, checks. I'm going to select Highlight Element. And notice as I move around the page, different elements get highlighted. I'm going to verify the quantity. I hover over it and the context menu pops up here with a lot of really nicely organized actions that you can make use of. 
I'm going to take the quick step, verify the text content contains one. We can see the verification shows up over here. Now, there's another handy way that we can get to work with elements. I can locate them in the DOM. Let me move things around here. I'm going to turn off highlighting, and I'm going to get just a little bit more real estate here. So down in this window is the DOM Explorer. There's the element right there. And from here, you can see that I have verifications over on this side. I could work with very simple uh, content verifications. In this case, I actually do want this particular um, verification there. I'm going to undock, pull this up a little more, and you can see that we've got add step. So I'm going to add that step in, and we get the verification over here. I could also work with attributes on that value and a number of other things. To stop recording, just close the browser. You'll notice that I goofed a bit and I actually clicked on part of the screen that I didn't mean to. That's easy to clean up. Remove the step. The first most important aspect of working with any UI test is to understand how your tool locates or finds objects or elements on the page. So let's dive into that and I'll show you how Test Studio can really help you make a solid first test here. Locators are how Test Studio and really every other UI test tool find things to interact with on the page. So for example, I'm going to pop open the developer tools for Chrome here. And there's a great inspector tool here that lets me, just like the highlighter in Test Studio, lets me have a look at specific items. So here are the various elements that are on the page, and we need to be able to find those elements. Now, the best thing that you can do is generally look for something like this, an ID. That's an attribute in HTML. It's not 100% perfect, but it's the best option if it's not something that's dynamic and going to change. ID is the best method to use for location. If you can't find an ID on the exact thing you need, you could do something like use uh, the CSS class value that's here. There are a number of other types of attributes that you could use. You could use XPath, which is a structural query language that lets you work with XML uh, or well-balanced HTML to do things like go by position and hierarchy. XPath can be a little tricky to work with, but it's a tool that you should be aware of. Additionally, you could also use Telerik's fluent jQuery language uh, which helps you find locators, or define locators, rather. UIs change, workflows change. So likely, you're going to have to update your locators. Here's a feature that I love about Test Studio. It's called the Element Repository, and it can save you a whole lot of time and headache as you're making great tests. The Element Repository is, you can think of it kind of like a central storage for all of the element definitions. So we're looking at it. It's the Elements pane. I'm also going to pop open the Properties here because that'll show us some more information about that. The nice thing about the Element Repository is that it is the central location for all of your elements. Moreover, it's stored by pages, so each element is uniquely identified for that specific page. If you need to change or update something, it's one spot to go, and it saves you a lot of time and makes your tests much more stable and robust. So locators are the first piece of critical thing about writing a great first test. The second crucial aspect that everybody has to understand is how to deal with asynchronous actions. So asynchronous is via Ajax or other similar technologies where part of the page updates and there's no call back to the server. These can be a little tricky to deal with, but there's a number of ways that Test Studio helps smooth this out for you. Asynchronous situations occur when part of the page updates without the whole page reloading. For example, 
when I click this, we can see that there's a spinner going on, and then later we get the Hello World text. That didn't reload the entire page, just updated part of it. Now, if you're using something like Selenium WebDriver, this can cause some problems because WebDriver and many other similar tools um, get confused. They didn't see that the entire page was reloading, so what happens is we get a failure because we can't find things like the text or the elements that we're looking for. Test Studio, on the other hand, approaches this much differently. What happens is behind the scenes, there's a dynamic timer that is waiting on that particular condition or situation to um, show up. In this case, we were waiting on the Hello World element to appear. Now, if for some reason your verification or your action didn't work out of the box by default, you can do things like change the role of this to a wait, and then you can alter the parameters. There are also test steps that you can inject to help. The point being, Test Studio will help you out of the box in most common Ajax situations. So you don't have to worry about the asynchronous, you just concentrate on writing great tests. Okay, great, you've got a solid first test. We've talked about locators, we've talked about asynchronous, you've got a complete running test now. Let's take the next important critical step in any software development or testing effort, and that's check your work into source control. Let's put this test over into source. Let's go ahead and connect to our server for TFS. You can use IP addresses. You can use the host name. We'll connect here. If you haven't authenticated, you'll need to. There'll be the list of the projects. We'll go ahead and we'll connect to this one. Notice that we're back to the project. You can see the green marks there. Those are checked out. Let's go ahead and check in and commit those changes. Please leave a check-in comment. It's a big help for your teams. A big help for your teammates, rather. When you take a look back at the project, you'll notice the lock symbol. That's everything's checked in. We're good to go. You've got one running test. Awesome. It's checked into source control. That's terrific. But it, as your project grows, obviously you're going to want to run groups of your tests all at once. Test Studio's test list feature lets you gather up tests and execute them on schedule. Let's have a look at how that works. You've got your tests built. They're running individually. Now let's look at how you can group these into test lists for execution for different coverage types. Test Studio lets you create two different types of lists. You can create multiple lists. You can run them locally. You can run them remotely. We're going to show you how you can use recurring patterns here to set up different operations. Now here's the neatest part of this. I can set up a cloud of remote execution servers. I've only got two here. I could easily have a hundred. I can distribute my tests across those. I can even get the latest version of tests automatically from TFS. Once I schedule those out, it'll go off into the execution queue and run without any further involvement from you. So you've got your first test running. Terrific. You've got it in source control. You've got it running as part of a list or group of tests. That's all great. Don't let it end there. Test Studio has a vibrant community where other people working with Test Studio can help you out. Test Studio has top-notch support folks. I loved working with those people. They're tremendous, they've got great experience, and they are there to help you out. There's also lots of great documentation, blog posts. There's plenty of support material to help you with your success. So there you have it. I hope this video has been helpful to you. I'm Jim Holmes. Good luck with your testing.